Welcome back to Unwrapped. I'm Mark Summers sharing a little food therapy with my fellow chocoholics. You ever heard of guitar chocolate? Well, if not, you have probably eaten it. This San Francisco chocolate company supplies restaurants and retailers all over the country, but you can also find their upscale chocolate in the grocery store in where else but the baking aisle? The Guitar Chocolate Company makes solid chocolate, liquid chocolate, chocolate chips, chocolate bars, even gigantic chocolate bricks. And Gary Guitard is passionate about his chocolate. I've always said it melts in your mouth like two lovers melt in each other's arms. Just outside San Francisco, California, the Guitar Company has a long history. We were the oldest continuously run family chocolate company in the, in the United States, 140 years. It all started in the 1850s when Gary's great-grandfather came to San Francisco in search of gold. He actually had bought chocolate with him from his family company in France. They liked it a lot. He realized, hey, you know, maybe the, the gold's in chocolate. Liquid gold. It's not that big of a stretch since chocolate was once a form of money. Chocolate comes from South America. People were taxed in cocoa beans, and uh, you could buy things with cocoa beans. So cocoa beans were an integral part of the culture back then. Gary buys his cocoa beans from the jungles of South America. He works with farmers who harvest cacao pods, ferment the beans for two to five days, and then dry them in the sun for five days. This is, uh, this is where it all starts. The beans arrive at Guitar in huge, heavy bags. This 140-pound bag would probably make around uh, 200 pounds of uh, chocolate chips. But in order for these beans to become chips, they have to become chocolate first. They go through a cleaning process with air that, that blows them. After the beans are roasted, removing the outer husk is the next step. We winnow it, which is basically separating the very thin shell from the inside of the bean, which we call the nib. Next, the nibs are ground into chocolate liquor. It looks a lot more like chocolate now. Grinding the nibs releases the fat. And it actually tastes like chocolate, but it's pretty doggone bitter. They'll add sugar to the chocolate liquor to sweeten it. Next, milk powder dumps into the mix. Now it's time for all the ingredients to combine together inside a refiner. This product, as a kid, was my favorite. This is before it's made smooth, so the sugar particles are really gritty and they can scratch the inside of your mouth and it wakes up your taste buds. And I really like it a lot, and I still do. The refiner grinds and emulsifies the chocolate and makes it smooth. It looks like a powder because the sugar particles have been ground so small. Then, the mix heads into the final machine called a conch. Every chocolate maker uses the conch differently. You could have the same formula, uh, same beans, same roast, and you could manipulate the conching and really have very different flavors. The conch heats the chocolate for up to 72 hours and makes the texture super smooth. Then the liquid chocolate tempers, a process of heating and cooling so the chips come out shining instead of dull. Finally, the mix goes into a depositor that shoots out hundreds of tiny chips at a time. We can deposit anywhere from three to 5,000 pounds an hour. The sea of chocolate chips rides through a cooling tunnel, then slides onto a conveyor belt and loads into 1,600-pound bins. It takes a half hour to fill each bin with thousands of chocolate chips. Guitard makes 23 billion chips a year. That's almost four times the world's population. They make everything from milk chocolate to bittersweet and white chocolate. Chocolate chips are great fun because they're incredibly versatile. You can put them in pancakes, you can make cookies with them, you can put them in ice cream, you can pop them in your mouth. Coming up, a trip.